Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am a huge fan of heat embossing and a huge fan of floral stamps. So I thought I'd combine the two for a video on my three favorite ways to use heat embossing on floral stamps. So to make it easy, I'm going to use the same stamp set and the same card design for each card that I'll be showing you. And what I'll do is I'll just, I'll show you the technique and what I do, and then I'll show you the finished card. So basically the card is going to be the same design. So I'll just show you here what I did. So I have just a plain white four and a quarter by five and a half note card. And what I like to do a lot with floral stamps is to have like a nice frame in the middle or off to the side on the front of the card, or you could use an ink blended, uh, ink blended square or rectangle, something that is going to help to kind of ground everything, ground the flowers, give them a, a place to land. So for this design, I just did a frame up in the corner here, and then I used this My Favorite Things inside out stitched rectangles. So I like this set because the the stitching on the rectangles is actually double stitching so when you punch it out you get double stitches if you choose to make a frame so what i did was i just took the two two sizes this would have been the second to last size and then the size below that and i put them together flipped them upside down and just cut them out with some white cardstock and it created this frame which has a really nice double stitch on it and then what was left over when it cut out was this rectangle that also has a single stitch so I kind of overlapped that with the frame to give my flowers an area to go on this corner and I'll be doing some fussy cutting of the flowers too so if you or if you have the matching dies that go with the flowers you can you can use that as well but i'm just choosing to to cut them out with scissors the stamp i'm going to be using is from altenew and this is called sunlit flowers and i really like this set not only because it's a layering set but it has the kind of open design flower in it and that's what i like to use for the heat embossing so i'm going to mainly use this flower as well as this one and then some of the leaves too to kind of to mix in there. And then for the sentiment, I'm using this sentiment set called Thinking of You from the Stamping Village. And it has a lot of great kind of encouraging thinking of you type sentiments. So like hugs and thinking of you and um, you're the best and hang in there. Just some ni nice um, sentiments that I thought would go really well with flowers. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the first card. So I have my Misty and I'm going to put a piece of vellum inside of it. And this is a little bit thicker piece of vellum for this particular technique. And I'm just going to run over it with my magic powder bag to make sure that no embossing powder sticks in places that it shouldn't. And then I'm just going to line up the floral stamps that I want to use right on top of the vellum. And for this, I'm going to stamp them a couple times. So I'm going to do it once on this side and then I'll flip the paper and do it on the other side. And I'm just taking some Versamark ink and I'm going to run it over the tops of the stamps. And then just stamp it over on the vellum. This is my new newer Misty and I really like it. It has the little lip on the side that kind of hangs over and it makes it really easy to open and close the door. So I really like that. So like I said, I'm going to flip the, the vellum over to the other side so I can stamp some more of the flowers. For this particular project, I wasn't sure exactly how many flowers I was going to use. So I just stamped a bunch of extra ones just in case. And what I like to do when I'm doing a project like this where I stamp a stamp multiple times, I'll stamp extra and then just trim them out or die cut them out and save them in a little container for another project. So it's nice and you always have like extra stuff if you need to make a quick card. So I'm using some white filigree embossing powder and this is from Paper Tray Ink and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top of the vellum where I heat them or where I am stamped the the flowers with the Versamark. And I already like the way it looks just on the vellum right now. I just think I just love that 
nice clean and clear look with just the plain white embossing powder. And I actually flipped the vellum over to start heating with my heat gun just so it doesn't burn. And then I flipped it over to the front really quick to um, heat the rest of it. And now I'm just going to trim it out with my scissors. And there's, it's super easy to cut out because the vellum is so smooth. And I'm using these Cutter Bee scissors that have um, a nonstick blade to them. And so all I do is just turn the, the flower as I'm cutting and it, it cuts out very easily. So I'll just show you this first one and then I'll continue on with the rest. But for time's sake, we'll move on to the next part of the, the project. And it doesn't really matter if you, you, you know, make a mistake on this. It's very forgiving, the, the vellum is, and um, I just really like the way that looks. So I'll go ahead and show you the assembled card. So with that same background, I attached the flowers in kind of a little cluster of three. I ended up using three, and I also added a little little leaf cluster at the bottom there and the best way I think to attach vellum is to use the Tombow mono tape runner it's very thin and cl pretty clear and then I use these 3d glue dots to give some dimension to the the outside part of the flower that kind of hangs over the raised part of the little panel with the the sentiment so that looks really good and I added a couple of enamel dots as well just to add a little pop of color and then a sentiment from the stamp set thinking of you that I thought would look really good with the flowers. So that's the first project. So moving on, oh before we move on to the next project I wanted to show you really quick another option for these vellum flowers. If you want a little bit of color you can add some Copic markers or any kind of alcohol marker to the back of the vellum. And you just want to kind of stay in the little outlines of the, the white and you just kind of color in. And I try to use as dark of colored Copics as I can because it, so that it shows through really well. And I'm just going to add some to the leaves too, some green. And you can just kind of experiment. And it just gives a little different look. It gives a little bit of color, but then you still have that vellum look to it, kind of that foggy look that I think looks really nice. So now moving on to the next project, I am again stamping a bunch of the flowers onto a piece of white cardstock with Versamark. And next I'm going to be using this Wow Ebony Embossing Powder. And this is a, a black embossing powder but it, when you put it on, it, it, it's really nice because it's pretty fine. So it's sometimes black embossing powder can be a little difficult. So if you don't have any, you can also use some VersaFine Onyx ink and some clear embossing powder to heat emboss it. And it kind of gives the same look. However, I like the embossing powder better because it just, it has a little bit more of a crisper look to it. So now that I have everything embossed we're going to or I'm going to use the heat gun first to make sure it's heat embossed and I'm just going to run every run it over the the white cardstock and next I have a paint palette and this is just a very inexpensive paint palette I think I got it at Michael's many years ago but I like the the colors that it has and they're nice and bright and I like the way it paints and I'm just to have, have a little cup of water and I'm using a small paintbrush and it's actually a um, it's a kind of stiffer paintbrush and I like to use this when I'm watercoloring because I'm not as good at watercoloring as as some people so um, but I really like the kind of the straight edge of the the paintbrush as well so it helps me get into the crevices and I have a bunch of different sizes and I'm just starting off with some yellow paint for the center of the the flowers and as I'm kind of adding water and adding paint 
I'll be dabbing the flowers with a paper towel. And what happens is the watercolor, the, the embossing resists the watercolor. So the watercolor kind of stays where it's supposed to and doesn't get out of the lines. So for somebody who doesn't watercolor that well, this, I really like this technique. So I'm just adding some more yellow and then I'm kind of getting, adding some darker yellow and you can kind of, again, experiment, just kind of, you, you can't really make a mistake with this because it's, it's a flower and it's in nature and it has all different colors. So I'm adding a little bit of orange just to kind of highlight the center of the flower. And then I'm gonna take a wider brush and add a little bit more of, or actually I'm gonna go in and start adding some of the pinks. I think I was trying to decide what colors I wanted to go for. So I'm doing a little bit of a darker pink as the flower moves out and that looks really pretty. I like that. You could use watercolor cardstock as well, but I found that this cardstock works fine. This is from Cut Cardstock. It's their 100 pound, it's a 100 pound uh, card panel. And it works, it works fine with the watercolors. I didn't have any issues with, um, you just, you don't want to put too much water down and you just want to kind of want to be gentle with it, but it takes the paint very well. And I'm just having, using some of the lighter pink on the outside of the flowers. and kind of filling that in. And it's fun to just kind of experiment with colors and this paint palette has so many different colors in it. So it's, you can, you can kind of go light to dark and, and see what looks good. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of the darker pink and kind of go around cause I want that to kind of show up. And then I'm moving on to the other flower and I've decided to paint this using some of the purple paint. And I like the way this turned out. I'm, I'm mixing some of the purples and then uh, getting a kind of a darker blue, bluish purple to kind of go in there too. And like I said before, what you want to do is in between painting, you just want to have a paper towel next to you and just kind of blot the, the watercolor and the, the paper towel will kind of suck it up and you won't have any extra on your flower. And if you if you end up going a little bit outside of lines, that's okay because we're going to end up cutting these out anyway. So, but I just, I like, this is fun to do. I mean, you can stamp a bunch of these and just watercolor, just spend a day watercoloring and try different color color options for your your flowers. And that's why I really like these these open stamps, you can you can experiment with color. So I'm just gonna continue to fill in the purple. And then in a second, I'm going to move on to the little leaf cluster there at the bottom. And for this, I'm just using the two flowers and the leaf. And I'll show you what the final card looks like again. So I'm just gonna grab some of the darker green to start to, to put at the bottom of the leaves. And then I'll add some of the lighter green, kind of moving up the leaf, sort of like how it looks in nature. <laughs> and you could do this with white embossing powder too, but I actually, I like the look of the black embossing powder. I just think the, it's, it's like a crisper look. And I'm just kind of blotting everything. You don't want to blot too, too hard because you don't want to take up any of the paper, but, um, and you can kind of wipe it a little bit and it wipes all the, the paint off the embossing powder or the embossed part of it. It's, it's uh, like I said, it resists that paint. So you can just wipe it right off. And then I'm just cutting around the flower again. And there you have it, there's the next card. And you can see that the, the watercolor is dried and everything is staying where it's supposed to. And I added the hugs to, for the sentiment from the 
from the stamp set. And I wanted to fit a little sending of, of, above the hugs. And so I grabbed a Hero Art stamp set that I had that had a small little sending on it. I thought that fit perfectly above the hugs. So I just tucked that right in there. And it's nice and clean and simple. And I really like the way that turned out. And the final project is using colored embossing powder. And I'm using, this is Zing, which is a very old <laughs> brand of embossing powder. I think it was from American Crafts many years ago. It was my first, first embossing powder I ever got. So I actually have a whole rainbow of colors still. But uh, since then, I've, I've tried newer ones too. And I, like this one right here is from Ranger. It's a really pretty green. And I'm going to use that for the leaves. And before I did this, I just, again, just stamped everything with Versamark ink onto a card panel. And then I'm just being really careful when I sprinkle the embossing powder not to get anything mixed in. And then I'm using lavender. This is also from Ranger. I'm going to add that to another flower. So, so far I like the color choices. You can experiment again and pick, pick the colors that you like. And I'm just going to heat emboss my flowers really quick. And I just like the look of the, you have the white insides of the flowers with the colored outside and it's just a really pretty, pretty look. And I decided at the last minute I needed a little bit more brightness so I added, um, I think this is called Peony. This is a an embossing powder that I just got recently and I'm just going to heat emboss another one of the flowers to add and I think adding that red just kind of makes everything pop. And there's the the last card. And I used the same sending hugs. Um, this time I kind of angled the, the frame a little bit. I just thought that that looked interesting. And then just the flowers kind of pop off the, the white cardstock. So thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I'll see you in my next video.